This is gonna be a really loaded video. I have so many questions that my mind was swimming as soon as I heard this. I had so many ideas and questions in my head that I had to write it down. So I have my phone on me. If you don't mind, I'm going to be referring to everything that I wrote down because I don't want to miss anything. So um, I don't like change, okay? I don't like change and I think a lot of people don't like change and I think some of us are in the same boat and anytime something does change it makes us a little bit uneasy because we are creatures of habit and anytime there's a curveball that's thrown we have to kind of take a second and be like okay whoa is this a good thing or is this a bad thing? Uh, you've probably heard on um, my Instagram stories I did and then also you know on threads on I think like the purse forum there's a thread that started uh, that Chanel is no longer going to be providing authenticity cards with their handbags and small leather goods. And this is sort of following in suit with some of the news that we've heard from Louis Vuitton that they are no longer going to be providing date codes in their handbags. So there used to be this leather tab and then there used to be like a little serial number and then from that number it's a combination of letters and numbers that you can uh, you know figure out where it was made and what year it was made in and when it was made. So um, that's no longer there and uh, with Chanel they used to provide authenticity cards with the serial number and there's also a serial number in the bag and that was a marker of authenticity of the bag. So in lieu of these authenticity cards, Chanel is instead installing these little metal plates uh, with the bag's uh, serial number etched in the metal plate. And I'll insert a photo. The Diorentist is a friend and follower on my Instagram. She has a really great Instagram account and she's very active on the purse forum, so uh, you might already know her. And uh, one of my followers had sent me, actually two people had sent me this news and they sent me a photo and a link to the thread. And they were like, hey, did you know that they're not giving authenticity cards anymore? And I'm like, oh, that's interesting. They're like, can you please discuss this? And I'm like, absolutely, I would love to discuss this. Uh, so I clicked on the link and I'm like, wait a second, this is the Diorentis post. So I messaged the Diorentis and she told me the whole story of how it came about. So basically she bought a wallet on chain for her mother and uh, when she looked inside there was no authenticity card so she had messaged her sales associate and said hey there's no authenticity card and she was told uh, and this, that she lives in Saudi Arabia and she was told by her sales associate that actually we have stopped giving uh, authenticity cards and uh, inside there's a metal plate and there's a serial number etched on it so okay so there were a lot of questions raised since then and I think um, certain sales associates have are giving different information versus others so we still don't know exactly what's happening and I think we'll only find out once you know we visit the boutique and we purchase something and then we get the full information then. Traditionally there was an authenticity card and then inside down inside the bag there's like a little um, sticker hot like a little white sticker it's not very special and it has the number in on there as well and there's no word yet whether or not these little metal plates that Chanel is putting in are scannable. So we've heard that there are microchips going in with the Louis Vuitton bags and we're not um, ex sure to what extent how much information is really going to be on that chip. Some people are concerned that they're going to be tracked um, and I can see why people will be concerned. I think, I think technology wise I think that would have to be more of an intensive, I'm not, I'm not computer savvy but uh, I think that chip would have to be a little bit more elaborate for it to be able to have like a geo tracking ability. Uh, but nonetheless, there's information stored on that chip and that's what they've implemented. And we don't know if Chanel is using that same technology. Some sales associates are saying yes, some are saying no. Uh, but I think more of them are now more inclined to say yes that there will be, it will be scannable with information about the bag as well as the purchaser, etc. It's set to come out for some of the new bags, especially starting with the 21A Mitia Dat collection for 2021, and that will probably be released, I think July, if I'm not mistaken. I don't know, I can't remember, but I think, yeah, I think in July, last year it was in July. But it's already happening right now because the DRN just bought a wallet on chain, so any new uh, items that are coming in, they have these little chips or plates and there is no authenticity card. I'll also link to the original thread, I'll put it in the description box below if you want to follow along, but let me just go through what the authenticity card looks like and, and all that for those of you who don't know. 
So with every Chanel handbag that you purchase or any small leather good, uh, like a wallet or anything like that, you will get a card that's kind of like a credit card. Um, it's black. There's nothing really special about it, to be honest. And I'll just cover up the serial number. But on the top, you have the serial number. And then there's kind of like this hologram effect. And on the back, like on here, it has the authenticity. So basically, the number that's on the card matches the inside. Now, it's really hard to get out the inside. There's usually, maybe I'll try to find like a stock photo. But if you have a leather lined bag, it's really hard to find that little sticker but if you have a bag that is lined in fabric you can turn the fabric inside out and see the little uh, sticker there and it matches the number of the authenticity card also with the classic flaps you'll usually get uh, a booklet and then there's like a certificate that will you know the sales associate will put your name there and then they'll put the uh, date of purchase they'll put the boutique and then they'll put the serial number they'll write it in there as well so you usually get all those things um, with your handbag and with small other goods you usually just get the authenticity card with the good and then inside there's always like a little tab with the serial number on there and then the serial number will have like the first two digits will denote kind of like the the batch or it'll somewhat um you know correspond to the season so for instance last time we were talking about the 31 series which encompasses i think like 21 uh, p and 21 s and all that so because of social media we've been trained not to lose this card okay we've all been told um don't lose the authenticity card because if you ever decide to sell your bag it'll negatively impact the value and um for for reasons that i don't know if they really make sense okay the authenticity card is a little bit of a nuisance to you know, keep safe, okay? Some people store it in their bag. Uh, I don't like to do that because I'm afraid I'm gonna lose it, so I always patch, package it away. But I never see it again. And I think the authenticity card is really only meaningful if you are actually selling the bag, okay? Um, because people are trained to think that they need a full set when they purchase a bag on the secondhand market, that they need the box, they need the receipt, they need the authenticity card, maybe all the packaging um, and if you're not selling your bags if you're a hoarder like me and I don't really sell I've actually no I've never sold actually maybe one yeah that I sold the mini I think I yeah the very beginning I sold that and that's it but after that I've never sold any of my Chanel bags or any items so it doesn't really matter like I, I don't really need it it's kind of put away and I don't revisit it again but I have that comfort of knowing that I have the authenticity card and it adds so-called value to my bag and um, we've been trained in social media like to not lose the authenticity card or, or if you're purchasing something that it should come with the authenticity card and why do you need an authenticity card to authenticate a bag because the authenticity card doesn't look very special to be honest. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's a piece of plastic and it has a, a bit of a hologram effect, but not, not so much. And people who create super fakes on the market are able to replicate those cards. There's nothing groundbreaking about these cards, okay? So really, if you look at authentic, um, authenticators, they don't actually place a lot of importance on the authenticity card because those can be created, okay? Um, they're really looking at the whole bag in itself. They're looking at, yes, they're looking at the sticker, of course, uh, inside the bag. Uh, and some bags don't have a sticker, right? Um, they're looking at the stitching, they're looking at the qualities, the characteristics, the hardware, and all the all the knowledge that they've accumulated about this brand throughout the seasons historically, they can authenticate a piece. And even with that, every time we do get something authenticated, I think for, even for someone like me, I know that I will be somewhat paranoid that it is not authentic and I prefer to purchase from boutique for that reason. But it, it doesn't matter to them to have that authenticity card is what I'm trying to say. And you guys have to remember that Chanel never had authenticity cards to begin with. Um, even vintage bags, some of them didn't even have those little uh, sticker codes on the inside. They didn't have serial numbers until a certain date and then they started producing serial numbers for their bags. And then I can't, I, I'll look up when it was, if, I, if, some, if any of you guys know, I'm sure some of you know, that they started implementing these authenticity cards, okay? So it's nothing that was original with the brand to begin with. It was implemented 
a lot later and now they're taking it away okay it's just because in social media we've been cultured to think that this is truly Chanel I don't really think Chanel actually keeps track of these serial numbers to be honest they don't they don't they don't write it at least in Canada and in Europe they don't write the serial number of the bag or the item on your receipt they do that in the US apparently but not here so the serial numbers aren't tied to me in their system they don't know like they'll know what I purchased but they don't know the exact item code uh, they don't know the exact serial number of the item that I purchased. There's no connection. There's no way of me registering that serial number to me. Uh, as opposed to say something like, I do have a few pieces from Moncler and they have serial numbers inside and you register the product to your account online. Um, so that's at least somewhat meaningful, but with Chanel, there's no way to do that. So I never really understood the whole purpose of the authenticity card. I think it was just an added little bonus. Other brands do give authenticity cards as well. Uh, with Dior, they give you an authenticity card. It does have a serial number on it and there is a little tab inside, usually the zip pocket of bags and it's really, really hard to get at guys. Like you can't even pull it out and it has a serial number on there. And usually on that card, the sales associate will write in the information or the product code on that authenticity card. Uh, LVMH is an encompassing umbrella company that owns Louis Vuitton and they also own Dior. They also own, um, I think Fendi? A bunch, of, a bunch of brands like they own a lot of brands okay and they came up with a platform called Aura and they're using blockchain technology something like that that's super secure apparently that it can't be broken into and it's RRFID or something like that I, I don't know technology guys but they're using a microchip so Chanel I don't know if they're using the exact same technology as them or if they've developed their own and it's likely that they didn't just come out with this out of the blue they've probably been developing this or planning this over the last couple of years and now they've brought it out because there is a need and I'll address that in a, in a couple of minutes so with the Aura technology that LVMH is implementing, with Louis Vuitton, they don't have authenticity cards. They have the serial numbers on the little tab, but apparently they're getting rid of it. They're just replacing it with a chip that can be scanned. Uh, and then all of the buyer information is uh, tied to that number. And then your the product information, where it was made, all that stuff is tied to that chip. You and I cannot read that chip with our naked eye or we don't have any technology. Nobody else will have the technology. It's only the boutiques, they'll have the technology to scan that and with some reason, I guess, if you're going in for repair or anything like that, you can't just bring any bag and be like, can you scan this for me to authenticate? Um, I think it's only done for a certain purpose, but let's see, let's see how it goes. So we're creatures of habit and we don't like change, okay? And, and brands do implement change over time. So it's not just with the serial numbers and the authenticity cards. And as I've mentioned before, they didn't have authenticity cards with Chanel years ago, okay? It was implemented for a certain period and now they're taking it away. So that was a change that people had to get used to. Uh, packaging, right? Packaging changes. So with Louis Vuitton, they used to have this really, really luxe looking, some people maybe didn't like it, I loved it. It was like a dark brown box and it had a leather tie around it. Like it was very, very luxe. And then they changed it. They changed it to uh, more of a orange box with blue lettering and then there's ribbon so and, and I'm not I don't really find that as to be as luxe uh, with Chanel they did change the boxes and that was a welcome change so I think that was around in 2014 or 2015 they came out with these magnetic boxes so you know they have like a really solid they're, they're more solid and there's a magnetic um, little box before that they used to have these you know they were they didn't feel as substantial it was just like a it was almost like a shoe box okay and they would rip and tear and they weren't as nice and this was a welcome change when they implemented these boxes some brands change their logo right so dior also changes their logo time to time they introduce new logos with uh you know yves saint laurent it used to be yves saint laurent now it's saint laurent and it, that's changed their logo uh so different brands are always changing things uh, and we have to, we usually get used to it. Uh, even invoices. So I remember Louis Vuitton used to give really really nice invoices. It was on special paper. It was embossed. It had you know the watermarking, and it felt like an authentic receipt. And now if you purchase anything, 
it's like it's like it's like you just printed it off at your home printer it's on basic you know plain white paper printed it doesn't it looks like anybody could have created that so it's not as special anymore and I think in some cases you they don't even give you the receipt they just give you an email copy uh, and you know Chanel hasn't done that yet I mean they still have their wonderful invoices at least here in Canada and the year in Europe but in the US you get actually a, a thermal paper uh, receipt and you know that's fine and all but uh, we, we usually get those paper um, copied invoices with the embossed Chanel logo. So I have some mixed feelings about this. Personally, I mean, I feel a little bit liberated that they're not giving <laughs> these authenticity cards because they are a pain to keep track of. I'm always paranoid that I'm going to lose it. Uh, even though I'm not planning on selling it, but I would like to retain it if it did come with the with the bag. I don't know if these are going to be scannable electronic. Some sales associates are saying that they're not. Some are saying they are. and I feel that they should be uh, because they're getting rid of that little sticker inside too. So they're basically taking away the authenticity card and they're making that little sticker on the inside that we're always paranoid about them peeling off. Okay, I'm paranoid of it peeling off. Um, they're making it a little bit more robust. They're making it a, a substantial little metal plate and the serial number is etched in there so it's not going anywhere unless you rub it for a long time then it loses but I don't think it should do that uh, so they're basically making that sticker more robust in metallic form and then just foregoing the authenticity card because it serves no purpose really so if they're scannable that would be great because it can you know you'll have that serial number tied to you so you have ownership of that bag and uh, it's in their system and I think it you know will correspond with the Chanel and me program which apparently they've um, expanded their warranty instead of being one or some areas two years five years from the date of purchase that they will service the bag if there's anything that was to go wrong with the bag however even before as you've seen with my wallet on chain story Chanel took care of me regardless and even in other purchases like if it's been more than a year or more than two years they have looked after some of my repairs and that's been very good and that's why I love the brand so uh, I don't think I mean it gives people comfort that they have a little bit more time if anything was to go wrong but just so you know depending on your relationship with the boutique they do take care of their customers when it comes to quality so I don't know how this little metal plate is gonna be affixed to the bag is it gonna be glued on okay um, it has to be glued on I mean they can't really sew it on so those are just some things that you want to bear in mind and if it's kind of like the sticker was always like an inconvenient spot to like get at like I mentioned with like a classic flap you can't go in it's really hard to go in and take a photo of it if it's something that has like a fabric interior you can pull out the fabric and then see the little tab but um, at least with this you can at least see it and then the serial number is etched on there so you can see the actual number of the bag which is great and some people think that you need the authenticity card for after sales service actually uh, from what I remember like I would bring it with me and I'd even bring the receipt with me and yeah it's very rare I think maybe once or twice they asked me for it, but really they didn't. And they never, they ne when you, say if you hand over the bag or the item to get repaired, they always tell you to hold on to the authenticity card and the dust bag in the box, okay? Because then they don't want to lose it. Um, I, I actually wasn't asked to bring that in. If anything, when I, when I got my wallet on chain replaced, I still have the authenticity card of my old wallet on chain and I told them that I'll bring it in if they want to or I'll just destroy it. So I have that authenticity card. I just don't have the bag because they replaced that. So they never required it. So I think so. it depends on boutiques, but basically they're getting rid of it because they people were losing them and then it kind of got in the way of after sales service. I have never had any barriers to after sales service if I had the card or not. So there's a bit of uneasiness about this, um, especially when people are buying pre-loved handbags, okay? So again, this mindset is you need to have the authenticity card in order for you to authenticate a bag. And I've mentioned before, the authenticity card is easily replicated and it serves really no purpose. So, and there's no, you know, even if you go to the boutique, uh, they won't look it up for you if it's an authentic serial number if you're buying a bag on the secondhand market, right? So there was no purpose for that to begin with and authenticators don't always look at the authenticity card, they look at the piece itself to tell you if it's authentic or not. 
because serial numbers can be stolen and replicated. So that's why people are asked not to show their serial code online or in photos because then people can replicate that and then create super fakes with that same serial number. So there's a few things. If this is scannable, which is great, okay, and you have your buyer profile linked to this um, number, let's say if your bag was to get stolen, maybe Chanel can blacklist this number. So, I mean, let's assume that this is not trackable, okay? Like, you know, with phones, you have the IMEI numbers for Apple iPhones, okay, or for other phones. I think they exist for other phones. And, you know, if it's stolen, you block that, and then that phone is not usable. You can't really do that with a bag. The bag is still usable if it's <laughs> if it's stolen or not, right? It's still a functional bag. So, uh, but if that person maybe tries to sell it, um, that that number is made aware by Chanel that this is a stolen bag, but then if whoever, whoever is buying it may not take it to Chanel for it to be discovered that it was stolen. So we don't know that if that is going to be something that's going to help with that. In terms of like ownership, it could be that you're able to transfer that ownership and that's not just exclusive to Chanel, it's other houses that are adopting this technology. It's just like when you're buying a vehicle, you have the VIN number of the vehicle and so when you purchase, say, a used vehicle, that VIN number is transferred to your ownership for the record. That might be in existence for the bags as well. You never know, right? So if you sell the bag, which you're totally entitled to do, um, you can transfer that ownership to the next person. Just like with Montclair, the serial number, I did sell a winter jacket and that person, when they purchased it from me, then registered that serial number on their profile on their website. So now it's under their ownership. So that might be there as well. So in terms of resellers, this has been a huge problem, especially uh, it, it, it's definitely accelerated during the pandemic when a lot of the lockdowns were happening and people were able to shop in stores. So they were you know, relying on the, the services of resellers and personal shoppers to purchase these goods for them. If it wasn't available in their boutique, if it was especially a hot item that was highly coveted, they'll, resellers have big buying profiles because they buy a lot, so they have access, they're VIPs, and then they, you know, get access to the bags before they hit the shelves, and then they turn over that bag and they sell it for a markup. And I've done videos on this before. There's a lot of videos online now as well, the whole reseller angst. Um, so they've implemented measures that, you know, they've implemented buying limits. There's no buying limits here in Canada yet, uh, but apparently in the States, see, there's a certain limit of how many bags you can purchase per month or per year or whatever in small other goods. In Europe, there's always been a limit for uh, tourists that you can only buy one bag, I think in 60 days, uh, which makes total sense, right? Because what, what normal person is buying? even one handbag a year really. Like normal people don't purchase these bags and normal people don't buy multiple bags in a year. I'm not saying that I haven't done it, I have done it, but that was legitimately for me and then like there's a number of months where I don't buy anything. And I know a few of you on Instagram who have gone into Chanel and walked out with like three or four bags, no kidding, and, and, and they do. And they do do this and it's for them, it's for their pleasure and they're not actually reselling it, but they're buying it because they're able to and they bought, they have items that they saw that they liked. So, but with resellers, I mean, it's they're like scalping, they're like ticket scalpers, right? They're just buying out and then they're selling for an extortionate markup and people are buying it and encouraging it and then, you know, that drives sale. So Chanel doesn't like this and, you know, this will curb that in some way. If this is scannable and there is information linked to your buyer profile, so let's say you purchase a bag from... I don't know, like a personal shopper or a reseller, okay? So they have bought the bag, let's say, you know, let's say they bought it in, in April, they purchased it from the boutique and you purchased it from them in May. And let's say you look at the bag and there's something off with it or there's a pop stitch or something like that. You take it into Chanel for repair and then they scan the whatever plate there is, that's assuming it's scannable. And then they see that you are not the original owner, that your reseller or personal shopper was the original owner of the bag. So then Chanel knows that this person sold the bag, okay? And if it's a one-off occurrence, it shouldn't matter, okay? Because everybody, like, you can you can always buy something and then sell it. Maybe it doesn't work for you or, or you know, maybe you need the money. Whatever the case may be, everybody has a right to sell what they purchase because it becomes your property, okay? But let's say this is a recurring thing where their profile shows up multiple times uh, that they've sold this bag. 
and you know here's the thing we have to assume that people who bought from a reseller are going to take this item into Chanel in the next I don't know year or two years for a repair okay we're assuming that that's happening otherwise normally that doesn't right like you know most of the time things are fine people don't take it into boutique in such a short time span that Chanel would put two and two together that this person has sold like 10 bags to 10 different people like that's not gonna happen uh, it might happen on the one-off chance but it's not gonna happen so I don't know I mean it is a it's, it's gonna probably discourage resellers but I don't think it will make a huge difference because one resellers work in packs right they have different profiles with different boutiques and they buy under different profiles as well as under their own um, and you know so they'll sell it but that's also assuming that the people who bought from this reseller are all racing to the boutique to tell them you know to take their bag in to get it checked and they'll find out that this that all these bags came. that's not going to happen that's only going to maybe happen for one thing so i don't know if it's really gonna uh you know diffuse this reseller market that quickly maybe over time but definitely not quickly the buying limits will definitely diffuse the reseller market but then i think there are ways around it because depending on your relationship with the boutique they will cater to you they will waive that limit for you uh so there is a back-end relationship, okay? So it's still gonna happen. Chanel's going to implement these policies, but it's still gonna happen in, in my opinion. Uh, what else? Um, oh, can the system be hacked? So let's say you have your etched-in serial number on Chanel. Um, and the major concern is with Louis Vuitton because you're not gonna have the serial number there at all. Like you can't even see what the serial number is. So what if their system gets hacked and all the serial numbers get wiped and all the information about the bags get wiped? What if that happens? And that's a concern with anything that is technology, right? Like if you have something that's, you know, physical, nothing's really going to happen to it unless you get caught in a fire or something like that, unfortunate, God forbid. But if it's electronic, it, it might get wiped. Anything can get wiped and hacked. But apparently this is blockchain technology and I'm not a technology expert, you know, I'm telling you for the thousandth time already. Apparently this can't be hacked, it's very, very secure, so I'm sure they've implemented technology with this in mind. But yes, with this there is a concern about being tracked, there is a concern about being hacked. So. All in all, uh, in my opinion, I don't think it will be such a big problem for me. Yes, we, you know, we're used to certain things. I, I for all of my bags that I have, every every one of them has an authenticity card. So it'll be interesting moving forward to receive a piece without one. But it might be special, and you know, I don't really care because I'm not really selling the item, at least not yet. But I'm, I don't have any plans to sell any items, so I don't think it will really affect that. And I think people will like this plate. Uh, it's a little bit more, it's more fancy. I don't know. Let's see. So I did ask on my Instagram. There were a number of opinions I did put in my stories. Uh, I did ask on my YouTube channel. Let's see what some of you guys had to say. So I asked on my YouTube uh, community posts. I did a little poll and 55% of you said that you still want the authenticity card. Um, and this is after uh, updating you guys that apparently that it may not be scannable. Okay, so if it's not scannable, 55% of you still want the card, 19% uh, of you never cared for the card, and 26% say you don't know how you feel. And the comments are, so Dale's Addiction had commented and said, it's designed to affect the pre-love market. It won't make much difference to those that buy from the boutique not intending to sell. And I completely agree because I'm not intending to sell and I don't think it will really affect me. Although I will miss the authenticity card, but it's not really going to affect me. Uh, Tati uh, said, I must say this is great for buying at Chanel. You know your item is guaranteed authentic, but if you ever want or need to buy from a reseller or personal shopper, then how would you know? And that's an excellent question. And I think in any case, even if you did have the authenticity card, you still don't totally know. And you can get it authenticated by you know one or two professional authenticators. But if you're paranoid like me, you'll still have that inside gut feeling that, hey, this, this may not be authentic, okay? Uh, just because of all the super fakes out there. In my post before that, where we assumed that this is scannable, 
Uh, 38% of you said, yes, it's about Chanel. It's about time that Chanel did this. 29% of you said, no, I want the traditional full set. And 33% of you said, I don't know how I feel about this. And I got a load of comments about that. Um, but basically, uh, one of you said, I N, uh, said, in the long run, this is not going to be good for the resale market, in my opinion. I would be scared to buy a bag that I cannot get authenticated. Chanel is not going to authenticate bags for us. I have a feeling authentic bags with full sets will sell for higher prices. That you, that you might be right. Uh, Shruti had said, LVMH are using blockchain technology, aka cryptocurrency, called VET slash VChain that tracks and logs the supply chain to prove the authenticity of their goods. Interesting. Uh, Bag Addict 71 Addict said, apparently there will still be a serial uh, on the inside, just a bit different. And yes, exactly. It's going to be engraved on the metal uh, chip or plate. Uh, Mama D said, if you don't have a store near you, how do you authenticate a bag? And you know, it's funny because stores don't really authenticate bags for us. Uh, it's only when you really get it serviced and even then they don't really comment. But if they've serviced your item, then you can assume that's authentic. They're not going to service a counterfeit item. Tati said, uh, that they think that uh, this is great for buying at Chanel, but definitely will be an issue if you ever need to buy from resellers, personal shoppers in the secondary market. Absolutely. And Loyal Scorpion said, I'm planning on buying a Chanel bag this week. Not quite sure if I should wait for a new one or accept a bag with the authenticity card. What should be better and how can we see the authenticity? Maybe it's not good for the resale market. So there's a number of, of thoughts there and even on Instagram. Uh, some people have said yes. Uh, some people said, you know, had concerned about um, the microchip not being able to track them. So I'll, I'll insert the responses, the screenshots uh, in the video as well so you can read and follow along of what people had to say. But um, I think this is a really interesting topic. I'd love to know your thoughts down below. Uh, is this going to stop us from buying from the brand? Absolutely not. There's always going to be a market. And I think overall, it will be a convenient thing to not have to worry about the authenticity card and having a more robust uh, plate with the uh, serial number instead of that flimsy little sticker that I'm always paranoid about ruining or it flaking off. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you next time. Bye.